We have covered hundreds of police interrogations on this channel, and usually the suspect being interrogated doesn't ask for a lawyer. Well, in today's video, 20-year-old Shania Moore is about to talk with the police about a murder they believe she was involved in, and she will have her lawyer at her side. Okay, we all set? Yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, so just so you're clear, uh, every, everything that we're talking about right now is, you know, being recorded, okay? So if you could do me a favor uh, when you're explaining, uh, you know, what we're going to be talking about today, if you could just uh, speak as clearly as possible. Um, I know sometimes people, you know, I understand you're probably nervous, so sometimes you have a tendency to speak quickly, but, you know, try, to, try not to do that, okay? And just, um, and speak so we can hear it, like I said, because it's being recorded. Fair enough? Yes. Okay. Um, so, obviously, we're here for an interview. Today's date is uh, May 28th, 2021. Present for the interview is Shania Moore uh, and uh, her attorney, Christopher Shemke. Yes, P74025. Okay. okay. And um, I know that you obviously have had advice of, you know, from your attorney uh, for quite some time, but I'm going to just advise you of your Miranda rights, okay? On March 13, 2021, the police found the body of 32-year-old Henry Ross, filled with bullet holes, sitting in a crashed vehicle. It appeared that it may have been a robbery gone wrong because $250 in cash was missing from Henry's wallet. The police checked Henry's phone and found that he had been messaging Shania on Facebook prior to his death. In the messages, Shania asked Henry if he would take her on a date and told him that he could meet her at an apartment complex, which, coincidentally, was where the murder took place. When the police confronted Shania about the messages, she denied any involvement. But two weeks later, she agreed to turn herself in with her lawyer present. So I'm just going to kind of lay it out for you and just say, you know, why don't you tell me what you know about uh, the events of uh, March 13th, 2021, and the, uh, the death of uh, Henry Ross. Um, me, try to speak up, okay. okay. Me and Melvin Willis, we plan to rap. Henry Ross. Okay. Um, I um, directed him to come to the back of the apartments, and um, we talked briefly for like maybe a second. Melvin Willis walked up and just shot him. I ran out the gate. We met up the next morning. I told him that we were going to be in trouble. It wasn't supposed to happen like that. He told me to keep my mouth shut or he was going to hurt me as well. So, I remained silent. Okay. So, Shania claims that she and her boyfriend, Melvin Willis, planned to rob Henry Ross. Shania told Henry to pick her up for a date, and when he arrived, Melvin shot and killed him. Shania claims she didn't tell anyone because she was scared of Melvin, but the detective isn't buying this story. How do you know that it was Melvin Willis uh, who was the shooter? Explain to me how you know that. Because we planned it together. So I'm boyfriend at the time. Okay. So let's break that down. Now, have you seen the video or at least seen still shots from the video or have you seen the video? Uh, I've seen it. Okay. So... Is that you on the video? Yes. Okay. And that's you in that, that thrasher sweatshirt and everything yes. else like that? Okay. Yes. So in watching the video, um, what I see is, you know, Henry backs into that parking spot, right? Yes. Okay. And were you were you on the phone with Henry when he's backing up? or, or yes. who, I was on the phone with Henry still. Okay. And were you talking with him on uh, like a phone app? As opposed to like a uh, like a like a normal yes. phone number. Okay, so as he's backing in, that's you speaking with him because you can be seen on the, yeah, the video. Yeah, speaking with Henry. Okay, and what what was the nature of the conversation that was taking place? Um, that he just arrived to the place. Okay, what he what did he think you were gonna do? Like, I mean, you, you had it where he was gonna meet you at Ranches of Rosebrook. You direct him to that location in that in that back area. He backs in. You walk up to the passenger side door. What did he think was going to happen at that point? That we were going to go out. Okay. Okay. 
Um, and then tell me what you see or what happens. When, let me ask you this. When did you know Melvin was there? He ran up on the side of the car. Did you see? When did you first see Melvin? When we got there. Okay, but did you see? Okay, so did you? Had you seen when you were when you were walking up? Did you know that Melvin was going to be there as well? Maybe can you flesh that out for yes, me? Yes, I mean. Can you explain to me how that? Because all I do is I see you on the video walking up. Tell me what happened right before that. Was Melvin? Were you and Melvin in a car nearby or or? Yes. Okay, explain that to me. We waited in the car for a little bit. Okay, so were you in a car with Melvin in Ranches of Rosebrook? Yes. Okay, and which vehicle were you in? The Expedition. Okay, is that the one that he drives and it's registered to him and everything? Yes. yes. Okay. Was anybody else in the car with with you and Melvin? No. Okay. Did anybody else know that this was going to go down? No. Okay. What sort of conversation were you and Melvin having in the car while you're waiting for Henry to show up? We weren't really talking that much. Okay. So how did you guys, you know, you guys were going to do a robbery, right? Was that, was it, that was your intention? Yes. Okay. How did, how did you know what to do? How did you know what Melvin was going to do? You know, all that kind of stuff? I didn't know. I just talked it out. But what does that mean when you say talked it out? You guys had to have, had, had said something that was how it was going to go down. You know what I mean? Like, did you say, I'm going to have this, this man go back to this area, I'm going to walk up to the car, and when I walk up to the car, I want you to come to the other side? You know what I mean? That kind of stuff. I can't guess. I need to understand how that, how you guys talked about it. We didn't really talk about it. It just... I think the detective wants to know. Like, for example, you and I are going grocery shopping together. I'm going to go over to the produce, get some fruit and vegetables. You grab the steaks. I'll meet you at the front. That's a plan. All right, we had a brief conversation. What are we doing? What's our idea? He just kind of wants to know, what did you guys basically have a plan? That's it. Just to rob him. It wasn't no, really a plan. It wasn't. Well, it happened very fast, right? From the time that you walk up to the passenger side of the vehicle to the time that shots were fired was roughly 39 seconds, okay? So when you're walking up, you know, Melvin's going to have to kind of have some idea of where you're directing Henry to go. Uh, and, and all that kind of stuff. Even though Shania is cooperating with the police, the detective is having a difficult time getting information out of her. This is most likely because Shania is doing her best to look like a victim. What the detective is doing is trying to show that Shania was just as involved as her boyfriend was. Um, so Melvin walks up, right? Okay. Yes. And I guess what I'm asking is, like when in the sequence of events did you know that a, I mean you knew a robbery was going to take place and but did you just did he say hey go up to the passenger side and I'll, and I'll do it then did he say uh, you know just sit there and talk to him and distract him and and I'll walk up and and try to rob him that's kind of what I'm getting at you know I mean how I guess what I'm saying is how did Melvin know that it was going to happen at that moment as opposed to you just getting in the car with Henry and Henry driving off he didn't know he just did it. I didn't get a chance to do anything. Okay. Did you suspect that Henry, Henry was going to have some money, or what was the intent? What were you guys hoping to rob, hoping to get from him? Just money. Okay. Had you had any sort of discussion with Henry about, like, did you have some sort of anticipate, like, some idea of what he might have, like, based upon what your plans were? Or, I mean, did it matter to you if you got 50 bucks or $200 or, or 1000 I mean, did you have some idea in mind about what he might have, and you know, in his possession? Yeah. And and and, and why? Why did you come to that conclusion? I don't know. No, basically, he wants to know. All right, this guy's coming up. Now the plan is to rob him. Now you figured he had some money on him. Did you and Henry ever have a conversation about money, or were you under the impression that he would have money on him? Yeah, he's okay, have money so on him. what the text wants to know is how did you know he was going to have money on him? Because we were taking you out. Okay, so you figured he'd have some cash on him because he was going to take you out. Yes. Okay, and you guys were supposed to have like dinner and whatever else. Yes. Okay. So you walk to the back of the vehicle. Do you see Melvin at that point? Yes. Okay. 
And what do you, t just tell me what you see happen. Tell me what happened right at that moment. They shot him. Okay, what, what happened before that? So did Henry, I mean, did they have a conversation? Where was Henry and where was Melvin when this is all taking place? Henry was in his car. Okay, was he in the process of getting out of his car? Yes. And, and why was Henry getting out of the car? He said he had to take a piss real quick. That's what he said. Okay. And so Henry's in the process of getting out of the car, and you see Melvin walk up to Henry. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And is does Melvin have a gun in his hand as he walks up to um, Henry? Yes. Okay. And um, what do you see Melvin do with that gun? He shot Henry. Okay. What happened right before that? Is there an exchange of words as you kind of described before? Yes. Okay. T tell me who said what. Melvin said, give me your shit. Henry said, what shit? And um, he, he told Melvin he was going to have to shoot him. Okay. And so Henry said to Melvin, you're going to have to shoot me? Okay. When Melvin pointed the gun at Henry and demanded he give him his money, Henry told him if he wanted his money, he would have to shoot him. It goes without saying that you can't put a price on a life, and what Henry should have done is just handed over his money, because you can always earn more later. If he had done this, perhaps he would still be alive. Uh, was Henry completely out of the car at this point? No. So he was kind of, like, if, he, if I'm Henry and I'm sit, seated in the car, is he kind of, like, getting out? Yes. Is it, and you, you saw that happen? Yes. Okay, and then when Melvin has the gun and Henry sees the gun, does Henry kind of retreat a little bit back into the car to, like, sit down? Yes. That's like, okay. And then Melvin basically says to him, give me your money. Is that right? Yes. And then Henry says, you're going to have to shoot me? Yes. Yes. Okay. And then what did you see after that? Melvin shot him. Okay. Um, did you see uh, what we describe as a muzzle flash where, you know, the, the gun gets fired and you can see like a spark coming out of the front of the gun? No. Okay. Um, as soon as the first shot was fired, um, what did you do? Uh, I stood there for a second. Okay. Because on the video, we can see the casing, the, the, which is when the gun is fired, the casing kind of gets ejected, and you can see it kind of like fly over your shoulder. I don't know okay. if you, saw, you see that. So you were pretty close. Would you agree with that? Yes. Okay. So after Melvin fires the first shot, what happens after that? I think he fired a second one, okay. and I ran. Okay. So you think he fired a second one? Do you know how many shots total he fired? No. No? Okay. Um, so then, so you ran, yes. right? Okay. And where did you go? Home. Okay, so you went to Hawthorne. You live on Hawthorne, right? Parkwood. Parkwood, I'm sorry. Okay, and then do you, do you know right like right away do you know where melvin went he went home okay the detective asks shania if she knew melvin was going to use a gun to rob henry at first shania claims she has no idea what was going to happen but then her lawyer tells her just to be honest because it will benefit her in the end so is it your statement today that you didn't know exactly how melvin was going to rob henry you just knew that the robbery was going to take place but you didn't know like what what sort of weapon was going to be used in order to to make the robbery happen? Yes. Okay. Might be a sticking point, but I just want to make sure because this is important that you're completely honest about everything. So, you know, if you don't know, you don't know. That's okay. But we want to make sure that you're not saying anything. There's no point right now. You're giving an interview. This is the time that we tell 100% the truth. If you didn't know there was a gun, then you didn't know. If you did know, then you could say so. But if you I don't know what's telling you to read a script, just be honest. I didn't know. You did know? Yes. Okay. And so when you when you say you did did know that Melvin had a gun, how did you know? Could I seen it. Did you see it in the vehicle before the robbery? Yes. When you were with Melvin? Yes. Okay. Um So okay, so when and once again I know that you know, we talked about going grocery shopping and he says, you know, go get the steak and you know, I'll go get the the baked potato or whatever else other than you guys knowing the robbery was going to take place you discussing with melvin that you guys were going to do a robbery you knowing that melvin had a gun 
and Melvin knowing that you're going to be directing Henry to this location so that Melvin could, you know, could rob him, you know, while you're there with Henry. Yes. Um, did you guys discuss any other details about how this was going to go down? No. Okay. Um, prior to you and Melvin ending up in Ranches of Rosebrook and waiting for Henry to show up and you're sitting in Melvin's car, uh, what sort of discussion did you have with Melvin leading up to it? You know what I mean? Like, um, we barely either talked. Or, we barely said two words to each other. Okay. How did Melvin know that the plan was to have Henry come to Ranches of Rosebrook? Did you guys have a phone conversation and you basically said, hey, I got this guy coming from the Detroit area, Henry, you know, whatever else, and I'm having him meet me over at Ranches of Rosebrook, and so this is where this is going to go down? Was it something along those lines? Yes. Okay. But you told him specifically Ranches of Rosebrook to Melvin? Yeah. Okay. Why did you pick that location? I don't know. Shania's original story was that they planned on taking Henry's money, but that's all she knew. Now that she is being honest and more evidence is being brought to light, it appears that Shania may have been the mastermind behind the whole thing. You know, we obviously looked in your phone and you ended up um, even Googling the address for Ranches of Rosebrook. Um, do, you, do you recall doing that? Yes. Okay. Was that was just to pick, a, pick an address to give to Henry? Yes. Okay. Now... Be honest with us, please. Was part of the reason why you chose Ranchers of Rosebrook because you were aware of this like back area, which was kind of secluded and that sort of thing? No, I just knew that it was just be quiet over there, so I just. Okay. Um, okay. I'll get to some of the text messages before we're done. So after, after the shooting, and once again, and, and I want to be fair here. Um, it was only your understanding. It was, box office. It, it box was only. Box. Oh, yeah, that's fine. It was only your understanding with all of this that you and Melvin were going to rob Henry. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. You didn't know that Melvin was going to to shoot Henry. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. You didn't want Henry to die. No. Okay. I'm asking it. Okay. Um, so after afterwards, there's a, a ton of calls between you and Melvin that night. Right? Yes. And some of them are pretty long in duration. Tell me about some of the conversations that you were having with Melvin at that point. It was probably a pretty scary situation for you, right? Is that fair? Yes. I was telling him that I was scared. I was throwing up and um, I didn't want to be at home. So what is, Mel what, are you in what is Melvin telling you while you're on these phone conversations with him that night? He was telling me that everything's going to be okay. And I said, no, it's not, because it's all going to follow me. He had, me and this guy have been talking for a while, and he has a picture of me in his phone. Did he tell you what sort of things you needed to do to, ch tr to try to protect yourself from that, you know, yes. from the potential evidence and that sort of thing? Yes. What did he tell you to do? To get a new phone. Okay. And did you get a new phone? No. Okay, why didn't you do that? Hmm. Um, I, the, as soon as I was leaving, the detective came to my house. Okay, the next day? Yeah. yeah. Did, okay. did, um, did, he, did he tell you to delete things or anything like that, like from your phone? or Because yeah. I, you know, there were some deletions that took place? Yeah, he told me to get rid of the app. Which, a, uh, the, which app are you referring to? The phone app. Okay. And um, deactivate my Facebook. Okay. Anything else? Mm -mm. Okay. Um, so then, it's my understanding that you didn't physically see Melvin until the next day. Yes. Okay. Um, and where did you see him? He came to my house. Okay, so he came to the Parkwood address. Yes. Okay. Was anybody else present when he came over? No. Mm -hmm. Just you and him. Okay. And what did you guys talk about? I just was telling him that I was scared and stuff, like, and he told me that it's going to be fine. And I said, no, it's not, because he had, me and Henry have been talking for a little while, and he has a picture of me in his phone, and he said, um... Henry had a picture of you, right? Yeah. He told me, um, just to keep quiet, and if I said anything, it hurt me. How did he say that to you? He just told me, don't say anything, or he'll hurt me. Was that something that 
surprised you from him or had he been violent uh, towards you in the past? We got into a few scuffles, but I just... Mm -hmm. Okay. So when we, 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 you know, we saw you, we had some detectives that saw you the following day, right? Yes. And that's when we took the phone and everything else? Yeah. Did you have a conversation with Henry after that about, I'm sorry, uh, uh, Melvin, after that? about the fact that the police had, had interviewed you and taken your phone and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, I okay. had to um, call him off a different phone. Okay, and how did that conversation go? I told him that the detectives took my phone and he just, I don't know, he hung up and we haven't spoke since then. Next, the detective wants to talk about a phone call between Shania and Melvin after the murder took place. Okay, so when you had, th uh, this is the part of the jail call where Melvin gets on the phone, okay? okay. And um, I'm going to read it, and he says, um, and tell me if this is all accurate, okay? He says, I got you too, okay, I love you. You say, I love you too. He says, hey, I heard what happened. You have a response that's unclear. Um, I don't know if I expect you to remember that part, but he says, I heard what happened, and you say, oh, he said, you said what? And then you start crying, and then you say, why would you, is this where, is this when you said, why would you do this? Yes. Okay, and what are you referring to when you say, why would you do this? Next to my issue. You didn't ask him that directly, but that's what you're, that's what you're getting at? Yes. Okay. Um, and then he doesn't respond directly to that question. He says, you okay though? And you say, no, I'm not okay until I get out of here. He says, okay, be strong. And you said, I am. He says, what's your attorney talking about? Like, what's the plan? Do you agree with all this so far? Yes. Okay, and then you have an unclear response. Um, he says, okay, okay. You said, I'm getting out Thursday. I'm gonna be on tether. He says, uh, uh, all right, um, talk to you soon, okay? You say, okay, and he said, hold on, uh, here's my mom. Do you agree with that? Yes. Okay. But you mentioned that, that you felt at this point in time with that conversation that that was another example where you felt like you were just kind of out on an island? Yes. Okay. Um, why, I'll, I mean, I'll just ask you, I mean, it, from the, from the get-go, especially once you, once you, it was clear that you were in trouble, why didn't you uh, come forward with the information about Melvin being the shooter? Because he was he was still out there. No, he, he said he was gonna hurt me. I didn't want to be. I didn't want to be involved, so I just stayed away. Okay. Is it fair also that you know maybe were you protecting him also because you know you weren't sure how strong our case was against you and him? Is that fair? No, I knew because of the messages that we y'all had. Okay. Um, so you're saying it was in, in large part because of a fear of him and what he might do? Yes. Okay. Was it also, I mean, it, and I'm not trying to upset you, but it's clear that you really liked him. Yeah. So did you feel a sense of loyalty to him? Yes. Okay. This robbery that went down, um, had you done something like that with Melvin before? No. No? Shania claims that this is the very first time they had ever set anyone up to rob them, but that is a lie. It turns out that the couple had set up several robberies over the previous months. What the detective needs to do now is show that Shania is not just a victim and that she is a danger to society. Now, based upon the text messages, it looks to me like it was something that, at least this one, at least this incident, incident was something that you had thought of. Is that fair? Yes. Okay. What made you come to that conclusion? I don't know. Okay. Um, with Henry, um, I mean, well, I mean, that's kind of a, it's a bold thing to do. Would you agree with that, to rob somebody? Yes. Okay. So what made you think that this was, like, just out of the blue going to be something that might be worthwhile and might work out. I don't know. Okay. And keep in mind, I know this might be hard for you to make, admit to this, but it's really important for anything that happens in the future, okay? 
because like I said people just don't out of the blue do this kind of stuff at least typically well I don't have to answer that well basically in the circumstance it's a big decision like and how did you guys come to saying like okay let's go rob someone versus you know that's a big choice you know like you want to go on a big trip or you plan a bunch of things to make that trip this is a big life decision kind of thing to do it's it's against the law and there could be ramifications so it usually isn't spontaneous so I guess he just wants to know how'd you guys come to the idea that yeah let's let's do this that it's a good idea mm. yeah yes what we did it before. You had done stuff like that before? Yeah. Okay. How many times do you think? Twice. Twice. Okay. Did anybody get hurt any other times? No. Okay. Was it similar cir set of circumstances where you reached out to some third party, some, uh, some, some male, and brought him to a location and then Melvin committed the robbery? Yes. Okay. This particular robbery went down with Henry. Um, there was some familiarity with how to do it because you had done it before. Yes. Okay, that's all I'm asking. Um, as far as your relationship with Melvin, um, you considered him to be your boyfriend? Yes. Yeah. Okay. How long had you been dating prior to this incident happening? Mm -hmm. Maybe we're on and off, so I mean, I know him for since last summer, 2020. Okay. Did you know him years prior to that or no? No. Okay. Just met. How much of this have, of what we're talking about today, have you explained to your mother? My mom knows. Okay. Was she it because knows, she knows a lot of things more through me? Okay. Um, because. I've instructed that everything she says on the phone, mm -hmm. so her mom knows to. Her mom is aware of what I know. Right, fair enough. I and I know that you, uh, she waived the attorney-client privilege, so I'm clear. So on that. that's where we're at on that. Um, and I'm going to speak on her behalf. I don't believe that her mother knew the full story. Okay. And I don't want to go down the path of speculating what she. Right. Okay. I didn't tell my mom, so don't put my mom. No, there. I'm not. Nothing. Who else? Who else knows? Uh, the details of this. You mentioned that you did say some things to your brother. Yeah. Right? Um, and you don't need to be involved either. Okay. I'm, ju I'm just asking you who else knows. Okay. Who else Who else knows what happened? Who else did you tell? My brother that died. Okay. So that's Toonie? Yes. Okay. Anybody else? No. Okay. Um, do you know who else Melvin told? No. You don't know? Did okay. he tell me why? Well, I'm just asking. You know? Did you ever have any three-way calls with anybody where Melvin was, you know, somebody else was part of that call, where yeah. they would know details? Yeah. Okay. Um, do you know where Melvin was earlier that day? No. No? Okay. Um, now, the nature of your relationship with Henry, can was that the first time you had ever seen him face-to-face? -face? Yes. Okay. How did that whole thing start? Like, how did did he randomly reach out to you through Facebook Messenger? Yes. Okay. Do you know how he even found you? No. I just added me. I don't know. Okay. And then obviously I saw back and forth, you know, text messages and that sort of thing, and um, you know, and I I kind of saw what led up to it. I don't think we need to get too deep in the weeds with that, but just essentially when you I mean you were in a dating relationship with Melvin, so is it fair to say that? Um, you kind of the flirtation that went back and forth between you and Henry was uh, with your belief that it may result in what happened that night this 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 a robbery that was going to take place I mean we talked before the bef way before I know but if you're in a dating relationship why well, I, I guess I would ask hey every, every man talk, I'm not the only woman he talks to I'm pretty sure Okay, so you're saying that it did, you didn't necessarily flirt with Henry with the belief that eventually he'd be set up to be robbed, is what you're saying? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Not trying to embarrass you, but it's been brought up by your attorney and by other people. W were there times that you were prostituting yourself? Yes. Okay. Was this particular time with Henry supposed to be that or no? Yes. Okay. Shania claims that she was involved in prostitution to make some fast cash. 
but somewhere down the line, she realized it was easier just to rob her clients. In her mind, either way she was breaking the law. This also explains how Shania knew Henry would have cash on him. All right, so I'm just going to go through a couple more things and I think we're good. Am I missing anything so far? No. Okay. Why don't we do this real quick? I'm just going to take a short break. Okay. Um, not even five minutes, uh, just to make sure I'm not missing anything. Uh, I know that we've got people watching, so I have to, you know, full disclosure, obviously. And so to make sure I'm not missing anything, I want to go through a couple uh, text messages, a couple, you know, some just briefly through some phone records, and I think we'll be done. Okay. Okay. Do you need anything? No. Okay. Do you need anything? No. Okay. I'll be right back. The detective leaves the room and comes back five minutes later. This time, he wants to talk about the messages between Shania and Melvin prior to the robbery taking place. Okay, so when you say, and this is the day of, you say to Melvin, I got something set up to, for tonight, we can talk about. Something quick and easy, I feel. What did that mean? The robbery. So that, that was, you were going to discuss with Melvin the robbery? Yes. Okay. And did you then have a voice conversation with him about the robbery? Um, it's just kind of like in person. Okay. Was that when you guys met at Ranches of Rosebrook? Yes. Okay. So you send this text to him, excuse me, the text to him saying that, you know, that you got something set up for tonight, something quick and easy. Um, he understood what that meant? No. Well, because his response was, okay, where you know him from, how long y'all yeah, yeah, been talking? So his immediate response is, he's saying something to the effect of, like, that would tell me that when you say, I got something set up for tonight, quick and easy, and his response is, how long you been talking, that you guys are on the same page, that that means that, that you know, you're going to talk to him later on about a robbery. Yes. That's correct? Yes. Okay. Um, you said, I don't know him. And then you said he look he actually looks older than that. I I guess I don't I don't understand what you meant by that. I sent I sent a picture of Henry. Oh, you sent a picture of Henry to Melvin. Yes. Okay. And was that the picture that Henry had sent to you, where he's kind of showing you what he looks like? No. A different one. Yes. Okay. What was the purpose of you sending a picture of of uh, Henry to Melvin? Was that so Melvin knew? what the target was, was going to look like? Yes. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Um, what was it about Henry that you thought would make him a target? I don't know. Was it just a timing thing? Yeah. Okay. Because I did look at some of your old Facebook. We got you know that through a, a search warrant. And um, you were talking to other people and like yeah. maybe kind of setting up dates. But what was it? Was it... Like I said, you kind of maybe, maybe already answered it, but was it a timing issue more than anything else? Or was there something about Henry? Was it because of his lack of familiarity with the Ypsilanti area? Um, no. Okay. No? So more of a just right place, right time sort of thing? Yeah, he said he was already coming down to see his brother or something like that. Okay. Okay. At 6.56 p.m., you say, he about to come, so I'm going to send an Addy, meaning address, right? Yes. Okay. Out there, but we really don't have nothing planned. Are you referring to that you and Henry don't have anything planned or that you're reminding Melvin, hey, we don't have anything planned yet. We don't have anything set up. Yes. I was referring to Melvin. To Melvin. So you were basically saying like, hey, we need to get our heads together and figure out how this is going to go down? Yes. Okay. Um, and then you say to him, then you not answering this shit, the shit is crazy. Were you getting mad at him because he wasn't answering his phone so that you guys could make that plan? Yes. Okay. Um, then you say, you be killing me with that. Were you just frustrated with him? Yeah. Okay. And then at, okay, after the shooting, um, then you, after the shooting, you sent him a text, babe, babe. And then you say, I'm just finna walk to my cousin, man. Who's that? To my cousin. Who's your cousin? Her name's Monasia. Monasia. Did you go over to your cousins? No. No. Why did you tell them that you were going to go to your cousins? Because I was scared. I didn't want to be at home. Okay. And to your knowledge, she was back at uh, his apartment over in Stevens? Yes. Okay. 
So then the following more actually that same night, he sends a text to you and says, Bay, be ready. And you said, okay. What's that about? He was going to come get me. Okay, did he get you? Yes. Okay, so you actually saw him that evening? Yep. Okay. Um, not a huge sticking point, but keep in mind, you did tell me that you didn't see him until yeah. after. It's okay. It's okay. I, you just have to understand that even little details, we need to make sure that we are completely um, Yeah. Honest. So. Okay. Shania is caught in a lie, which doesn't look good for her. Initially, she claims she didn't see Melvin after the shooting, most likely to show that she was afraid of him. But now the narrative changes and she saw Melvin only a few hours after the shooting. Not only that, but they got a hotel and spent the night together. Where did you see him at? He came and got me. Okay. And, and what did you guys, was he by himself? Yes. And what did you guys talk about? I was scared. I was... Did he... Up. Go ahead, I'm sorry. I was scared. I was throwing up. I was nervous. Okay. And what was he saying to you? He's telling me to calm down. Everything's going to be okay. What time was this approximately? Uh, 10.34 p.m. on Saturday that night. Okay. Um, did he, was it also at that time that he was explaining to you that, you know, I shot him and I thought he was going, you know, thought he had something and that sort of thing? Yes. Okay. I know that you said that he threatened you, but I will say that in your jail letters, some of the reason why at least what you're expressing to family is what, what, why you're mad at Melvin and why you're kind of fed up with him and why you eventually are doing what you're doing, talking to me today, is because he hasn't reached out to you in any way, shape, or form, hasn't put money on your books, you know, hasn't really shown any sort of loyalty to you. So I just want to make sure that we get that out. Yes. Um, is that part of it too? Yes. Okay. It, what would you say is more the part, the, the fear or the fact that he just hasn't been loyal? And Both. Okay. And I think that's, that's fair. I mean, to look at it, why she didn't come forth first was because of fear, and it had nothing to do with the event. And then in addition to that, she's going through this process and, oh, you know, because she's not afraid of him right now. She's afraid potentially for her family, but she's in custody. And now it's like, cool, you've abandoned me. I think so it is. Okay. That would make sense that it would be both. Okay. So once again, uh, I know that I believe that you've been truthful, but I just want to make sure even to, you know, like this new information came out about, you know, you guys meeting up immediately after and that sort of thing, which you have to acknowledge you left that out, right? Yes. Initially. So everything that we've talked about, we've probably been talking now for, I don't know, an hour and a half, maybe. Yeah. It's 11.15. 11.15. So this is your chance, man. It's super important, okay? And Mr. Shumke, I'm sure would agree that is there anything any detail that you left out or minimized? No, I told the truth. I'm be there. Okay, because you you okay. basically you built the cake. It's important, but we want to make sure that there's if there's any sort of icing that needs to go on, we're not missing out. Because all the big stuff, the stuff that's important, is necessary. But defense attorney like myself will pick apart your story if there's things left off, and they'll just say you've lied a little bit, which means you're potentially a liar, and we can't. Let, don't, and then they'll try to convince the jury that your statement is incredible. That's what he's trying to do, because you've given the stuff that is the most important. I told the truth, so I could sleep at night. I'm not going to okay. keep okay. doing this. No, I understand. I understand. you got to understand that you know this is important. It's a murder, and we want to make sure we don't I miss any, we don't want to miss any details. Okay? I don't. Okay. I already feel like the bad guy anyway, so don't do that. In the end, Shania and Melvin would both be charged with murder. Because Shania cooperated with the police, prosecution offered her a plea deal. In exchange for her testimony against Melvin, Shania would receive 5 to 15 years in prison. This meant she would be eligible for parole after 5 years. Melvin, on the other hand, would be found guilty of murder and receive life in prison without the possibility of parole. What are your thoughts on this case? Did Shania get what she deserved? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.